it's the apocalypse. Okay, so we just got back from seeing X-Men Apocalypse, and um, what do you think? I don't think it wasn't as uh, I don't think it was as bad as what the reviews made it out to be, but unfortunately, the uh, the '90s X-Men cartoon kind of spoiled me a bit. Like it was, it was okay. Like I like I didn't think it was bad, but it wasn't spectacular or like it didn't leave me speechless or anything. It wasn't that fantastic? Now the effects were great. I like that. Um, the way I look at X-Men series and movies. It's at the point where it's two separate canons because uh, it's kind of like the first class, like I said, you have to ignore everything about the first three movies, they're just irrelevant. But when you're going through the first class series of movies, they're still making tie-ins with the main three movies. It's like, they're trying to reference them, trying to make them all in the same universe, but it's so not canon. There's so many things that's just not... <laughs> uh, no, the, the, the problem is, is like, I'm not going to give it that much of a strike because, you know, when, when the first three X-Men movies were, uh, were, uh, were made, there was never any intention of any kind of prequel series to be made to kind of reset everything and things along those lines and I can I can give the movie you know a pass for that I know they're trying to uh, their best you know to try to connect the dots and try to like like make anything relevant but like if you're expecting your your fan base to try to to try to connect all the films then they're just going to uh, uh, open themselves up to just one gigantic headache because there's so so many plot holes unfortunately like the movie, it is average, you know, for a, for a superhero movie. Like it, they did a competent job with, with with what they had, but but obviously, you know, when you're dealing with such a main villain, such such as Apocalypse, it's like there have just been better reiterations of that character. It's just that, like, he was nowhere near as quotable as <laughs> uh, uh, as the '90s X-Men movie counterpart. I am you know, Apocalypse and. <laughs> And the problem is, is that, you know, despite being, like, the world's most powerful mutant, he certainly didn't show it. Well, it's... Like, <laughs> there, uh, there was no, like, with regards to, like, any, like, mass shifting or, you know, him changing changing his body or his form into different things, you, you know, to drill bits and shooting lasers and, you know, that kind of thing. It seemed it seemed really toned down, uh, toned down with, with regards to his abilities. Well, and as I was trying to say about the uh, move, like the original movies, they were still trying to uh, make them relevant with Days of Future Past. So I guess that's the kind of weird gripe I have with that. But yeah, two separate worlds of movies. Uh, Apocalypse's powers. Yeah, he's supposed to be the most invincible, like nothing can beat him. But yet, why does he need Xavier to connect to the world? Why does he need Snowstorm? And Archangel, yeah, this is what I mean by not being canon. We first see Angel in the, you know, in the, um, the third movie, The Last Stand, you know, and all of a sudden, apparently, it was back in the 80s, he had his wings back to the, you know, fighting, and he turned to Archangel, I'm like, I can't really see how that ties in, but, you know, whatever, two different universes. Um, the action was good, I love the effects. Uh, before seeing this movie, everyone was saying Quicksilver steal the show again. He kind of does. But there's a scene where he, he rescues a bunch of people, and to me, that was just a hundred percent fan service. I think the only reason they did that entire scene is because everyone loved him when he was first, you know, up to his shenanigans, being silly, being fast in the first movie, and well, in first class, and they just, oh, let's just do it again for the sake of it. And it, it really does. It, it's funny, but it's pointless. And uh, and like that's just the thing. It's just like they uh, like they're just doing such an excellent job with that character. It's 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 almost as if he he needs his like own standalone movie or you know at least a movie in which he's the primary you know plot point. But like I kind of feel like that that every time that uh, that they bring him in, like they're always going to do that fan service slow motion scene. You know, uh, basically where uh, where he's just. Uh, as Crystal said, just up to his usual shenanigans, but it was probably uh, uh, the most humorous part of the movie. Yeah, but but you know, like there wasn't a whole lot of that in it. This was this movie was more focused about 
uh, the dark side, all of the emotions that characters are going through, especially Magneto. Uh, I, personally, I found this movie very predictable. It was very cliched, especially with Magneto. Uh, not, I don't think I'm giving much away when I say this, but this could be a spoiler alert. Obviously, Magneto was taken in by Apocalypse. He's angry at the world. He's lost so much. He wants revenge. He doesn't really care. And he goes through with it. He's, you know, he's ready to destroy the world, all, the hu all humankind. And then his friends come in and say, Oh no, you must come back to us. We're, we're fighting the bad guy. He first he ignores them, but then the power of friendship <laughs> brings him back. It's like that line, uh, that passage, You betrayed me. No, I betrayed them. It's, I'm just, oh god. Like, it's... But, you know, I'm, I'm sure it works for some people. It, me, I, I saw this type of thing coming a mile away, so... <sighs> Again, very little I haven't seen before. I found the second half of the movie more exciting uh, than the first half. The first half is a little bit of everywhere, lots of little plot points, they're trying to string it together. That, like, that can work, but I found that they've done it too much in this case. Too much coming at you at the one time. But overall, um, I found it okay. Just nothing particularly special, but it is good enough to recommend. I, like, if you're an X-Men fan, like hardcore X-Men fan, definitely see it. If you're just a general superhero fan, uh, why not? It's better than Batman v Superman. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, ultimately, you know, it may cater to your interests, but, uh, but it may not. But, like, ultimately... You know, it does what it set out to do. It doesn't really do anything to make the uh, superhero genre any better or any worse than what it is. It's a competent film in its own right, but, you know, like, a little a little above average. That's... Yeah, I still think it's good, so... Yeah, definitely check it out. I mean, we had a pretty good time. It wasn't a waste of time, no, no loss, so I'd say, yeah, go check it out. Yep, 7 out of 10 for me.